everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode from the lair. And uh, this particular episode's mainly uh, gonna be basically my opinions. Had some people uh, send me some, you know, uh, ideas in the comments, what they wanna hear. Uh, the first one, the individual wants me to explain why a lot of men turn to a lot of uh, self-destructive behavior right out of a divorce or relationship. And uh, it is true, yeah, a lot of guys, you know, they, they get out of a relationship, they get divorced, they turn into drugs, alcohol, uh, they like to self-medicate, engage in uh, risky, dangerous shit. Uh, why they do that, I have no idea. <clears throat> I, I myself, you know, I was going down a pretty uh, you know, bleak road and a lot of it had to do with uh, the way I was treated by family court. And uh, you lose your children as a dude. I mean, when they say you can have them every other weekend, that's four days a month. And uh, in my opinion, that's one of the worst things that could happen to an individual, you know, especially a parent It's a loss of a child. And that's exactly what happens to these guys. And, uh, you know, men don't really uh, deal well uh, emotionally with a lot of problems. We're real good at building walls. And uh, we throw up a wall after we're done with that and everything on the other side is forgotten. And we just kind of, you know, go forward from there. And a lot of times kids are on the wrong side of the wall. You know, it's neither here nor there. It's bad, but it is what it is. But yeah, uh, that's basically uh, my opinion of the self-destruction, self-destructive behavior. Yeah, from you know, you ask me, I, I told you what it is, so or what I think it is. I had somebody uh, want to know my opinion on the the moon landings. Well, <clears throat> I have actually reviewed a lot of the photographs and a lot of the uh, video and picture evidence, and there are a lot of weird shit. I won't say a lot. Some of those pictures have some weird, unexplainable phenomena, especially. If uh, they were taken, you know, on the moon, and you really can't explain that phenomenon unless it was a set here on Earth. But on the other hand, they've done, you know, a lot of uh, a laser bouncing where you actually fire lasers off of the ref reflective surfaces of some of the material they left behind, and it actually bounces back and people detect it. <clears throat> And, you know, people ask me, you know, what is my opinion on the whole UFO thing? And if the, you know, do I think the moon is, is hollow or there's actual, you know, uh, alien bases or construction on the moon? Yeah, I really don't know. Um, I'm not going to say there is. I'm not going to say there isn't. Uh, there's a lot of shit that goes on in the earth that uh, just can't be explained. And... Uh, I don't know, I think the lowest level of, um, what is it, that uh, museum that uh, the United States maintains in Washington, D.C. They have all the aircraft, they have all of, uh, a lot of artifacts from back in the day. And uh, there's a lot of things that just uh, pop up that really go outside of... Uh, the theories that we have of how we uh, came about and how long we lived on this planet and since it goes against that theory which is you know mainstream it's you know forgotten and if you talk about it your career is ruined it ruined and they blackball you and it is what it is so you know I would I find it hard to believe <clears throat> that we uh, did not go to the moon now maybe they didn't land on it maybe they did I don't know but it is what it is, and uh, probably in the next tw 10 to 20 years, when they go back to the moon, we're going to find out a lot of shit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have all the answers. All I know is there's a lot of weird shit that goes on out there, and uh, it interests the fuck out of me, and I'll talk about it. All right, somebody wanted me to explain to people out there why being a sperm donor is bad. Yeah, maybe you do it when you're in college, you need the money, but... There's been precedents out there of sperm donors having to pay child support, even though they legitimately donate their DNA material so a woman can have a kid down the road. 
Uh, that's bad. All right, number two, if these women, you know, don't have a man, can't get married, or whatever reason they haven't had kids in a timely manner, then they probably shouldn't have them. Because after 35, she gets real dicey with these women. It's expensive as fuck. It's selfish because you can actually be maiming the child for the rest of its existence. So don't support it by uh, throwing any uh, material at it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, uh, the fourth opinion. <clears throat> this particular individual uh, wants me to explain some of the uh, basic premises that women use to manipulate men. And the two biggest tools that they have at their disposal is guilt and shame. And right behind those is blame. And the blame usually will fall under, uh, you know, guilt or shame. If you don't care about that, then they really have no power over you anymore. Also, uh, if you care what anyone thinks about you, you will always be their slave. So you need to get beyond that. <clears throat> and, you know, the four plus years I've been doing this, I've had so many, you know, attacking comments and emails and telling me I should be ashamed of myself. Even bring my children into the equation, stating your children are going to be so embarrassed when they find out what you're doing. Well, they know and they're not really embarrassed. Um, I have the freedom of speech. Um, I don't do political correctness. I do political directness. Uh, and some people find that offensive. I don't care. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, like say you're dating a girl and she wants you to meet her parents and you're like, nah, I'm not ready to do that. And then they throw the guilt bomb like, well, you know, we've been going out for a while and, uh, you know, it's kind of hurtful to me that you don't want to meet my parents. All right. Well, maybe the guy doesn't want to meet your parents because you're kind of just a piece of ass and you're nice to hang out with once in a while and he doesn't want to take it to that level but you're using guilt and shame and blame to try to force them to that level, that's manipulation. And you're being manipulated with uh, shame and blame and guilt. <clears throat> you know, my mother, she was really good at the guilt bomb. Uh, and they really fucked with me for a long time until about, I don't know, I was about 16, 17 years old. And I realized, you know, it's just guilt, you know, you didn't ask to be here. You do everything you can. You're just one man. You're one person. You can't be everywhere. You can't do everything. So uh, the guilt bomb quit working, and it was all downhill for her after that. All right, uh, here's a here's an email from somebody who uh, was very upset at my Robin Williams tribute video. If you haven't seen it, please check it out and share it, and I'll read it for you. <clears throat> I saw your Robin Williams video, and the first half was great. The second half was disgraceful. Putting his private business out there was nothing but disrespectful. <laughs> if he did have those problems while he was alive, he should have made changes to them himself instead of living with them. Uh, you raving dick sore, fuck you. Okay. Number one. Robin Williams, yes, uh, there are some medical issues that came to light after his passing. And uh, he did get a taste of uh, the end coming when he had the heart surgery. And he did make legal steps to move all of his assets into a trust that his children would uh, basically get, which was a total good move. But it's also, you know, when somebody does that kind of shit, that's a red flag for, you know, Anything after this is all gravy, but I can check out anytime I want. Uh, and I dug into the part about his you know, former uh, marriages and the amount of child support he was having to pay. And uh, you know, I don't have any of his uh, you know, case numbers or how many times he went to court to try to have this reversed or not. Um, I was just making uh, educated guesses based on uh, you know what went on with other Hollywood divorces at that time and the fact that his first wife was receiving alimony for I don't know 20 some odd years to the time of her death because uh, typically if a woman is not getting alimony or it's not that much she'll remarry and she'll remarry to find another pocket to suck out of or another you know meat straw to suck you know what I'm saying 
uh, because the world's a crazy evil place. It's better as a team, and one, if one of those people basically uh, has a mountain of cash, it's better for you. So yeah, she was getting quite the payout from Robin Williams. And his second wife, who divorced him, who was a fucking nanny. God, I'm going to do a video called The Nanny Bomb on this, but... Yeah, you know, she had more kids, which she was married to him longer, and it was probably a pride thing that she didn't settle for anything less than uh, than what the first wife got. Even though, at the time of the divorce, her herself was worth somewhere between 13 and 15 million bucks. So she didn't really need to get alimony, um, but a lot of these women do this just to be fucking cruel. Or they say, well, you know, it's just the law, I'm just following the law. Yeah, right. So, in regards to the second half, you know, I don't think it was disrespectful. I think people really need to know what's going on in, in you know, in some of these guys' lives who get divorced. Especially uh, some of the stars in Hollywood. They're getting fucking soaked, man. Why they fucking sit down and don't say anything about it is beyond me. Because they are in prime position to actually fight against this. Uh, and, you know, they have a platform to speak. They have the, the money to support it. But they don't, and uh, it just gets worse from there. And my final point is this, that everyone that was involved in Robin Williams' life, and his, you know, his current wife, his two ex-wives and all that, they know that they royally fucked up. They did. That's kind of why he, they kind of had a secret ceremony and had them uh, cremated in private Nobody really knew what was going on. When you operate under an umbrella of secrecy like that, the only thing, the only reason that exists is because what's going on underneath that is shameful behavior. All right, they're at, they know they fucked up. They know they drove that dude to his death, and they didn't want to get any backlash. So they kept it as quiet as possible. Now I talked to a lot of guys. They loved Robin Williams. They're just waiting for the time to be announced when they're going to have his funeral and there would have been they would have shut down the goddamn city because that many people would have come to it because they loved him that much and the fact that he did not get that type of funeral which he richly deserves is another aspect of shame and i blame his current wife and two ex-wives for that fucking bullshit and there isn't a hell hot enough for you and I hope you get there and you stay there for a long fucking time and never know a moment's rest because he was truly a good dude. He had a heart of gold. He helped out a lot of people. And in my opinion, he ended very unfairly. That's just my opinion. And finally, somebody is asking me about this NFL bullshit. All right. Let's boil this down to its uh, brass tack, shall we? Uh, NFL. National Football League, and there's the AFL, whatever. Most everyone just knows it as the NFL. National Football League. Football is a game. All right, it has really, it's just an entertainment that people do to play to, you know, burn up time. It turned into a sport, which is fine. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a game. And then you have these people in the league who are making millions of dollars to play a fucking game and they're disrespecting the flag which is a symbol of this nation so basically disrespecting the nation that allows them to play a game for a living they'll they're famous they're pretty much set for life as long as they don't get any bad habits and they can manage their money properly after they pass away or after they retire uh, because they're making more money than the average person will make in 30 years. 30 years. And they make that in, a lot of these guys make it in one year. Or they sign four and six year contracts for between, you know, 40 to 80 million bucks. And, they, you know, the, the, the NFL does that, the NBA, baseball. I mean, they pay these guys a lot of fucking money. Yeah, and do I think um, there is a disparage, uh, the disparity going on in this country between different races, uh, yes and no. Um, do I think that uh, they're purposely targeting 
these individuals, the black people out there, or what have you, to shoot them and throw them in prison? No. But when you look at the, the numbers, and they're like 13 to 16 percent of the gross population, and they're responsible for over half of the violent crime. You know, check, check out the Uniform Crime Report, the census, what have you. Uh, and, you know, more white people are shot by cops than black people. You know, it just so happens that the news who, or the media, which is run by Soros, they keep f uh, fanning this whole, you know, race war shit because that's what they want. And uh, you, know, you better wake up because it's going to happen if you, you don't stop it. But, uh, you know, also, they're not taking into account that a lot of the black you know, people out there were born to, into fatherless homes. And you just... Google or do any search for result, you know, benefits or drawbacks of fatherless children or um, you know stats in regards to the fatherless. I mean, they're multiple time, they're multiple, uh, they're they're way more likely to commit suicide, wind up in a mental institution, get involved in crime, go to prison, go to jail, uh, you know, get hooked on drugs, you know, work in the sex industry. It is basically. I mean, when it's seventy-five percent of the children being born to black women are out of wedlock, that is a huge, huge thing. That's almost that's that's two. That's like seventy-five percent. That's like if you had a dollar, it's like four quarters or three quarters worth of single, you know, single mothers and one quarter of people who are actually married. I mean, and it's just costing a lot, and. Uh, the people who are responsible for all that are the Democrats. We did a video on that. You can, you know, it's coming out either next week or this week. Uh, that talks about how the the Democratic Party was always, you know, against uh, or you know for slavery and all the other bullshit that they did. And Lyndon Johnson basically uh, swapped out the the whip for the feed bag, and basically, he's, he's basically the same mindless lackeys following what the Democrats say. You know, do your own research. It's all there. Yeah, do I think that uh, the NFL players should be protesting, especially, uh, you know, during the games? Fuck no. No. I mean, these guys can have a press conference after. You know, they have all kinds of opportunities to get in front of cameras and say, and, and, and tell their opinion to the world. They don't have to do it at, at the game. And now, you know, I'm hearing that they're not even going to film the start you know, the star spangled banner because you know they're going to start the game as soon as the game starts they're not going to film any of the other you know prequels or what's leading up to the game which is is bullshit in my personal opinion i, I think the professional sports world is it needs to be put in check we need to walk the fuck away from the nfl nba major league baseball hockey these people really don't deserve to be put up on pedestals like that I mean, hell, I was just looking for the criminal records of some of these NFL players. I think there's like 27 felon, you know, convicted felons that are playing football now. I mean, come on. That is such horseshit. It's just a fucking game. It's not worth it. Find something else to do. Get a fucking hobby. Because guess what? This next year, they're going to be playing the, pretty much the same teams again. You know, it's not worth it. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Uh, I hope you like this one. Uh, it's not my best. Opinion ones usually aren't, but uh, you have a good evening.